Hello, I'm Daniel. I wanted to tell you a story today. This is about a Zen teacher named Hakuin. Hakuin lived in the 1700s in Japan, and I think his story tells us a lot about our potential. So this is called the story of Hakuin and the accusation. Hakuin, he was a Zen teacher, and he lived in a hut near a village, and people would just come to him to ask for teachings or to ask for advice because he was thought of as really wise. He had a really good reputation. So people would just come from the village or they would come from far away and they would just talk to him and listen to what he had to say. And one day, this young girl in the village got pregnant and she was young, still living at home. And she didn't want to tell her parents who the father was and they bothered her and bothered her about it. And she lied and she said, Hakuin, the monk is the father. And you now Hakuin, he was a monk. He didn't, he was, he was under a vow of celibacy. He didn't, wasn't supposed to get young girls pregnant, right? And also she was like really young. So what happened? His reputation was ruined. The parents of the girl, so the grandparents of the baby, um, told all their friends about Hakuin, about how he had impregnated their daughter, and so his reputation is ruined. People stop coming to see him, which, of course, whenever people were coming to see him, they would bring him things. They would bring him, he made his living by donations. People would bring him meals or bring him sometimes money. They would bring him things, and that was how he made his, his living. So, Although he's very humble and he lived in a hut and he didn't have a lot of possessions, so he didn't need a lot. But still, people aren't visiting him anymore because his reputation is ruined. And this family with the pregnant girl, they're very poor. So when the baby's born, the, the grandparents of the baby, they take it and they go to Hakwin's hut and they say, this is your problem. You made this happen. This is your fault. You have to raise this child. And... Hakuin doesn't respond like a lot of us would, right? I can imagine kicking and screaming and being like, that's not my child, and go away, and I can't handle this, or whatever. Hakuin doesn't do any of that. He just says, is that so? Is that so? And he receives the baby. And that's it. So he just responded with what we call equanimity. He didn't get upset that this is being done to him. He's a victim here. He's very clearly a victim, but he didn't get upset. He just said, okay, well, he just dealt with the situation. And I think we could think that if he did kick and scream, if he did say, that's not my child, or yell at the parents or do anything else, like nothing he could do would make him look less guilty. Nothing he could do would make him look, look less guilty. So he really sort of responded in a skillful way. Just, just sort of, oh, well, this is what we're doing now. And so he's raising this child, this baby by himself. He's, he's got his neighbors to give him some milk so he can give the baby milk. Um, there's no formula in those days, of course, but his, his neighbors happen to have a baby. So there's milk that's being given to him. And... He's just raising the baby as his own. And some time goes by, like a year and a half or so, Hakuin's raising this baby, and the mother of the child has confessed. She has confessed to her lie, and she has told her parents that the father is actually a poor fisherman boy, her age, and she tearfully confessed to her parents, and her parents feel really bad for putting this on Hakuin. And they go to his hut and they say, you know, we're really sorry. We are going to tell everyone that the story wasn't true and we feel really bad and we're going to take this baby from you because it's not your responsibility. And Hakuin just says, is that so? And he lets them take the baby. And the story, the way this gets told is that Hakuin was not attached he had equanimity, so whether or not he had this baby made no difference to him. He was content either way. I don't 
Um, I tend to take a different interpretation. I think that he had a year and a half to bond with that baby, and he was probably very sad. I think he was probably very mad to be falsely accused in the first place, and then very sad to have this baby taken away in the second place, and he just handled it well. <clears throat> he just knew how to handle shit, and he handled it. And so for that reason, we can learn a lot from this story, because... When we have, we don't have setbacks as extreme as Hakwin, but we have setbacks in life and we get really upset sometimes and we get really carried away sometimes and we can fall apart and think it's helpful to think about like, can we keep a calm and even mind? How do we keep a calm and even mind? And that's where our meditation practice can be helpful to us because the truth is sh shit's going to happen and it's not going to be as bad as what happened to Hakwin, but shit's going to happen. It, well, and it may be as bad as what happened to him. It won't be exactly what happened to him, but it could be really bad, right? And we can fall apart when things go bad, or we can just be like, is that so? We can just try to move forward and deal with it. Just, well, I guess this is what we're doing now. That's Hakwin's response, and we need to learn how to cultivate that kind of response ourselves. So um, that's the story of Hakwin and the accusation. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me.